Hello, everyone. Hello, prospective wildcats, future wildcats, um, potential transfer students, parents, if you're joining in. We're super excited to have you here. Welcome to our young alumni panel. This is going to be a really fun next little 45 minutes to an hour of us answering lots of questions about our Northwestern experience, our time after Northwestern. Please note that if you have admissions questions, we are not going to be answering those during this panel. So feel free to direct your questions to the info sessions that we have recorded, or you can go to admissions.northwestern.edu. With that, we are going to kick things off with some introductions. These are going to be a little longer than usual. So for those of you who have not somehow been to an info session that I moderated during my time with admissions, my name is Elizabeth Bernstein. I graduated this past June, so kind of crazy that that was almost a year ago. I studied neuroscience and psychology at Northwestern, and while at Northwestern, I was really involved with a student organization called Camp Kesem, which is a nonprofit that helps kids whose parents have cancer. While at Northwestern, like I said, I studied neuroscience, so I was very much so on the pre-med track, so I spent a lot of time thinking that I was going to do that, then decided I was going to go into consulting, so went through the consulting process at Northwestern. Then my start date was pushed back a bunch because of COVID, and I actually got a job that was always intended to be a short-term job in marketing at a startup called Table 22. So we help restaurants to build recurring revenue through subscription programs. I was actually then convinced by my startup to stay in January. So that is where I work full-time, and I've basically been for about the past seven months. So quite a transition from pre-med to consulting to marketing, but Anything is possible with your Northwestern degree. So Sydney, do you want to go next and introduce yourself and then we can popcorn around? Sure. I was just telling Daniel that I have can't even remember like what I was doing. But so my name is Sydney and I'm graduated from Northwestern almost two years ago at this point, 2019. I studied communications with a minor in business. And while I was at Northwestern, I actually spent the majority of time working in the admissions office. I worked there for all four years, did a couple different roles while I was there as well. Um, I'm from the south suburbs of Chicago, so not too far from Evanston. But after I graduated, I actually moved to New York for a full-time opportunity at Strategy and PwC. So now I'm a strategy consultant with them still, and I've worked on several different clients from really cool tech companies to right now I have an educational services focused client at the moment. So a lot of experience there, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, Daniel, do you want to go next? Awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Daniel. I am a 2019 grad just like Sydney. I studied uh, neuroscience and philosophy on the pre-med track and um, actually have done neither neuroscience, pre-med or philosophy after graduating. Um, instead, I taught English for a little bit in Malaysia through the Fulbright program, which unfortunately was canceled early. Um, I re returned to the US where I took the MCAT and then began work at Deloitte Consulting. I'm aligned to their human capital practice. And so I do a lot of work with HR. And so right now my current role um, sort of centers around helping different clients uh, build uh, and integrate new HR systems together. And so I've worked for clients in the financial services industry, life sciences and healthcare. And currently I'm on a fashion retailer, which has been really exciting for me. Um, but at Northwestern, I was involved in Camp Kesson, just like Elizabeth. Uh, we were part of the same exec board um, for, for a year. Um, and uh, I also did a lot of research on campus. I was down at the medical school at Northwestern in downtown Chicago where I did cardiology research for four years and I worked every quarter while I was at Northwestern. Uh, three years with our alumni relations and development team um, at Phonathon, getting to call some lovely alumni and chat with them for a little bit every evening. Um, and then uh, towards the end of my undergraduate career with admissions with this team of lovely folks. That's a little bit about me. I'm gonna pass it off to Candace. Thank you, Daniel. Hi, everyone. My name is Candice LeBlanc, and I am a recent graduate of Northwestern. I graduated in 2020 on the dual degree track. So I received a Bachelor of Arts in Creative Writing from Weinberg and a Bachelor of Music in Opera Performance from the Beaton School of Music. And since graduating, I've not been able to do a lot of music, mostly because the world shut down. But 
before the world war shut down, I was um, set, scheduled to be singing with the Grand Park Chorus of Chicago and with the Chicago Symphony Orca, Orchestra Chorus. Um, that's still TBD. But <laughs> during my time at Northwestern, I was heavily involved in the admissions office, but I was also really involved in the performing arts on campus. So I was a part of Northwestern's Dolphin Show, which is the largest student produced musical every single year. I also was heavily involved in our opera theater, as well as doing acapella. I was a part of a co-ed acapella group known as the X Factors. So now, and um, it being the pandemic, I did a pivot and actually through a Northwestern connection was able to secure a job with an environmental advocacy group called Tradewater that's based out of Chicago. And with them, I work as a digital marketing strategist. So lots of marketing pivots in here. <laughs> with that, I'll pass it over to Emily. Hi, um, I'm Emily Coffey, and I am not in marketing. Um, I, <laughs> I graduated from Northwestern in 2020 as well. Um, I finished classes in the winter quarter of 2019, but I stuck around uh, for spring quarter of 2020 so that I could finish off my thesis. Um, so that was a big thing that I did in my time at Northwestern. Um, that entailed running my own research project um, and eventually writing a 94-page thesis, which was very fun during COVID. COVID. Um, in addition to that, at Northwestern, I spent a lot of time doing uh, Boom Shaka, which is a drum dance and rhythm ensemble on campus. Um, it's a little bit like Stomp, if you've ever heard of that. So I was on the executive board of that for two years. Um, really, really fun. Also spent a lot of time in the admissions office with these lovely people. Um, I was the tour guide coordinator there my senior year. Um, and then, yeah, finished off my time at Northwestern doing that thesis and doing research there. Um, and in the time since, I spent a lot of time applying for jobs. Um, and then I had a part-time internship. <laughs> Thanks, Candice. Um, I had a part-time inter internship uh, with one of the nonprofits I worked for um, one of the summers after my uh, sophomore year. And then, um, so I was able to do that part time and then eventually finally landed a job as a resource coordinator for an after school program in Chicago. Um, so it's in, uh, it's an elementary school called North River Elementary School. It's in Albany Park. Um, and it's really fun. I get to work so close to home and I get to hang out with students, um, even virtually. It's still a good time. Um, so yeah, that's a really awesome opportunity that I've been able to become a part of. Um, and then finally, I was able to do part-time reading for applications this year for North Northwestern, uh, which was also very fun, a lot of reading. So congratulations to anyone out here who wrote a long essay, because I read it. Um, so that's me. Awesome. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning is that I'm from New York and also I, I, I was admitted to the Kellogg School of Management through a program at Northwestern called Kellogg Future Leaders. So it's a deferred MBA program. So at some point I will put a purple t-shirt back on and come back to Northwestern to complete my MBA. Um, just in case you wanted like another random thing about my career that I don't even understand. Um, cool, let's kick things off with questions. So our first question is, what is something totally unique about Northwestern that you loved? And I will let Daniel take our first one. Okay, wow, thanks, Elizabeth. There is obviously, I think, a lot of things that are unique to a lot of different schools. Um, something that has been really unique for me is, of course, I think the ability to study what I studied, and you'll find that with a lot of other students. I think that's why a lot of folks are attracted to Northwestern in the first place because it is easy to sort of, you know, we have this and is in our DNA slogan. And I think when you're a student at Northwestern for four years, it can feel like a lot, but it really is there for a reason. Like I wouldn't have been able to study neuroscience and philosophy um, had I not been at a school like Northwestern with flexible credits um, and things like that. That feels like the easy answer to me. Something that was like really unique to me was at least was something that was amazing for me in my first year at Northwestern as I was transitioning into college was the dining staff actually. The dining staff was like my second family on campus. Um, whenever I had like personal issues, school issues, I would talk to um, the people that like served us lunch. Um, they're really, really wonderful, kind people. And I think uh, definitely one of the parts of my Northwestern experience that I hold very near and dear to my heart. Awesome. We have um, kind of a more specific question about something super unique. So for Candice, what is unique about the vocal program and process as well as the creative writing major? Very specific. Okay, so from the voice major, I like to think of it as having 
two specializations within it, within it. Neither of these are formal, but it's a track that most voice majors follow. And there is having a more opera education and having a more cont contemporary or choral education. So um, every voice student has a, a voice teacher that they work with, that they study with, and that's where they get that opera training. And undergraduates have equal access to opera. I know in some other institutions that have a graduate program to them, it's really hard for undergrads to be involved in opera. But I, my first opera I was a part of was my winter quarter of my first year. Um, and that's, we can do either um, main stage opera, which predominantly is more catered to um, graduate students just because it's very demanding vocally, but there's also chamber opera initiatives from the undergraduate experience. So that's the opera perspective. The other side is choral music. Uh, the leader of the choral department at Northwestern is Dr. Nally, who is the, uh, the conductor of the, I think it's now, four-time Grammy nominated, two-time Grammy winning ensemble called The Crossing. And we get to work with him on a day-to-day -day basis doing concerts. And so he runs his choirs like professional choirs and it really helps in getting that experience in class and being able to bring that outside. So that's opera. And for the creative writing side, there's three tracks that students are able to pursue um, in creative writing. There's poetry, fiction, and nonfiction. I personally did nonfiction. And uh, the major is something that you apply to at the earliest at the end of your second year. And applying for the major essentially is getting acceptance to the year long sequence that takes place your third year. And that year long sequence is very workshop based. You're working with a cohort of anywhere between 10 to 15 students and you have the same faculty member that you're working with the whole time. And so you're able to build that really strong camaraderie amongst your peers and then also have that supplemented with outside workshops and doing master classes. Every year, Northwestern hosts a, a writing, um, essentially a writing seminar that's hosted for the greater city of Evanston. And we've had, um, you know, poet, poet laureates and Nobel um, writing winners and things like that. And we're able to get hands-on experience with them in that regard too. Awesome. The next one is for Emily. What is one thing about the, in, or what is one thing that you know now that you wish you knew as a high school senior or first year at Northwestern? Um, that's a really good question. So first I wanna just start by saying what I majored in in college, cause I forgot to mention that. Um, but I was in the School of Education and Social Policy also known as CESB. Um, and I majored in social policy. And then uh, I had a second major in religious studies in the Weinberg School College of Arts and Sciences. And uh, I had a minor in classical Greek. So that's what I did academically. Um, but one thing I wish I knew was um, it's so I think when you get to Northwestern, you have this like desire to just get involved right away. And that's an amazing desire. Um, and Northwestern really loves catering to that. Like we have like the club fair right away. You have all these opportunities to get involved. Um, and, but there's just so many people that are getting involved at once that sometimes you don't get to get into like the clubs or organizations that you like think are going to be perfect for you. Um, so I always give the example of, I applied to be a peer advisor my freshman year, um, um, those are the people that run our orientation week and they're really amazing people. They're very outgoing and so great. Um, and I like kind of see myself as an outgoing person. So I was like, I got this, like, this is made for me. I want to be a peer advisor or a PA. Um, and I, unfortunately I applied, but I did not get that job. Um, and I was so bummed out about it. Uh, but then like a month later, I applied to be a tour guide and I got to do that instead. And I got to represent the university in a really cool way. Um, it was different from the way that I wanted to, but it was also really, really awesome. And it was a little bit more long term. So um, I think that a lot of times when you come to Northwestern, you're like, you come in like, really ready to go. And that is an amazing feeling. But sometimes Northwestern tells you to slow down a little bit and like, take a second, you might not get into everything that you want to do right away. Uh, but there's like so much time within the four years to do what you want to do. Um, and sometimes you end up happening upon things that are like even better than you initially planned. Um, in a shocking turn of events, your 18 year old self is not the same as your 22 year old self. So sometimes you get to make decisions later that uh, you wouldn't have necessarily made in high school. So that's kind of my big piece of advice. That's awesome. Thank you. I think that something you were kind of touching on is that, you know, your view of yourself and also your view of Northwestern changes throughout your years on campus. And that's actually a question that we have for Sydney. So how did kind of your view of Northwestern and your view of academics and whatnot change throughout your time at Northwestern? 
Well, the way my view of academics change is that I actually, <laughs> I was already laughing. <laughs> so I came into Northwestern as an econ major. I realized that was hot garbage. And then I switched to communications, you know, so that was a change for sure. <laughs> but, you know, we we're hashtag out here still with a job. So it worked out. <laughs> and, but no, for all the, I just realized that what I thought I wanted wasn't the traditional business path that I actually needed. So I made the switch to communications and still worked out, still got an awesome strategy job. So that's how my experience changed. Hopefully that's what you're looking for. I was, that's, that's exactly what I, what I thought going into that question, um, which now I'm actually going to piggyback on this, which is there was a question for someone who wants to go into business. What are the best undergraduate majors as well as kind of a question about comm. So can you talk a little bit about undergrad business at Northwestern and how there are a lot of different paths to that. Sorry, Daniel, I know I'm robbing you of one of your favorite questions. Sydney, can you chat? Sorry, that was for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? All good. Um, based on, you know, what you were just talking about, about business and how you still have a really awesome job in yeah. business, but you didn't pursue like the traditional econ path to that, would you be able to talk just a little bit about the opportunities to get involved with business at Northwestern and how there really isn't a singular path? Mm -hmm, for sure. So at first I was kind of nervous that there wasn't a traditional business major, but then when you think about it, how do you really describe business? You know, business means so many different things and everything has business in it. I can go work at a hospital and still be on the administrative side of things, which is business, but it's healthcare business. So that's why I decided to go the communications route. I realized that I can get a grade for talking in my public speaking class. And I said, maybe this is the major for me. Let's figure out how we can turn this into, a, into an actual business focus. So what I did was I actually started pursuing consulting. And I remember talking to the recruiter and she just explained how broad of a role it would be and how broad of a industry it is. And so what, what that means is that, what I mean is that, so when I got there, she just talked about how she wants a little bit of everything. That's usually what these companies want. They don't want one type of business major because, you know, they have that. And so the originality of coming in with the comm degree actually ended up helping me more than coming in with the econ degree. No shade to econ though. No shade to econ at all. Awesome. Um, speaking a little bit about transitions, how does Northwestern help with the transition of incoming first years into Northwestern? Candice, do you want to take this one? Sure thing. So I think the biggest way that Northwestern prepares students for their transition to university life, whether they are first years or transfers, is through Wildcat Welcome, which is a week-long orientation for first years and transfers, and they're led around by a peer advisor and in groups of anywhere between 10 to 15. So these can be all students that are signed up in the same first-year seminar in Weinberg. For me, all of the students in my PA group were all dual degree beaten students, and they're going through um, learning various different traditions, like running across the football field or um, being able to march through the arch and things like that. And so you have that experience and you also are signing up for your classes as well with this peer advisor. There's someone who's just a few years older than you, also a Northwestern student who was able to give you really good advice. Um, so there's that. And there's also where you physically live on campus. For me, I lived in Willard Residential College my first year. And there's different types of um, housing opportunities on campus. And I'm sure that Northwestern has a video on that by now. But the people that you live with on campus can be some of the really great assets for you to, whether it's decompress, talk about things that are and are not class, having study groups, having a kitchen. Um, in fact, I'd say probably at least five people on my floor for my first year, I'm still in regular contact with today. Um, so those are just a few of the ways that people are able to transition to campus. Awesome. To kind of close the loop on that for Daniel, we just talked a little bit about transitioning into college. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to transition out? I know you had kind of a, a very wild turn of events after college. So just chat with us a little bit about how you navigated that. Yeah, the end of college is really weird and stressful for me because I, I was sitting in this weird balance of having a couple of things lined up, but like a really far deadline for when they would actually start. 
Um, so I graduated in June from Northwestern, but Fulbright wasn't set to start until January. So I thought about sitting around and doing nothing um, for six months, which would have been, I think, lovely. I think a great break for anyone, but uh, you know, the, the folks in the admissions office were so kind in offering to let me extend uh, my student job into the summer and then into the fall and then read a little bit um, afterwards. Um, and so this really wonderful transition period where I had the support uh, from like a work perspective and it, it, with this community that I had really come to find a home in, uh, in this in the admissions office, but also at the same time, uh, when I think about sort of preparing to have all of those next steps planned ahead. I really, really relied on both the faculty that we have at Northwestern in preparing my applications for uh, the Fulbright program as well and like editing my essays, those letters of recommendation, but also our Northwestern Career Advancement Office. We have a wonderful office staffed with really incredible people who go out into industry and they bring back recruiters from all of these different companies to come to campus, chat with us with the you know eventual goal of us getting jobs and internships and things of the like. And they were absolutely instrumental in uh, helping me set up the plans that I had set up uh, by the time I was ready to graduate. Um, so I think, yeah, from a lot of different perspectives, right? So from, my, from the work community I found at Northwestern to more formal, formalized systems of support with NCA Northwestern Career Advancement um, and the faculty and advisors that we have um, at Northwestern, like I felt very, very prepared to enter the working world and and leave the, the the comfortable bubble that is Northwestern. Awesome. Um, yeah, you chatted about NCA being awesome and kind of your transition out. I know, Sydney, you interned for the company that you eventually started working for, so Strategy Anne. Can you talk a little bit about how you secured that internship, what internship opportunities are like, and then kind of how you, we even have a specific question about how you were able to make connections in New York with Northwestern. Sure. So pro tip, secure the internship early, then you don't have to worry about nothing else. Pro tip. So what I did was I actually, so I knew I wanted to go into consulting because I didn't know what type of business I wanted to do. And consulting gives you the opportunity to get into so many different industries. So once I knew that, I found out that PwC slash strategy and actually had a sophomore year opportunity, which was really cool. So what was great about that was that they actually came to campus and brought a Northwestern alumni to campus to interview us. So I was super nervous for the conversation, but it actually turned into, oh, you lived in Willis? Oh my gosh, you ended up living in the same room that my friend lived in. And then we started getting into that connection. And of course, we started talking about Allison Dining Hall, how it was upgraded, things like that. And so once I got that and landed that first internship, I was brought back for a second internship and then ended up going back for full time as well. Once I got to New York, so at first I was in Chicago for those two year internships, but then I decided, you know, be different. <laughs> go be like sex in the city, go to New York. So I went to New York and I was like, what am I gonna do for friends? But what actually worked out was that me and Daniel, I'm pretty sure it was me and Daniel, we went to a Northwestern alumni like event. It was actually in Evanston. And they set up the tables based on where people would be after school. And so I went to the little New York table, you know, I met some friends and we started like actually hanging out and then they started connecting me with more people. And that's how I ended up meeting a bunch of people in New York. So it really worked out. Awesome. That's, that's a great story. Um, <laughs> I think a little bit more as well. So maybe for Candace, I know you mentioned that your job kind of came through a Northwestern connection. Can you chat a little bit about how Northwestern helped to get you your job connections um, and just kind of how students are supported generally in finding a job post-grad? Sure thing, and I'll talk about it from the arts perspective and the non-arts perspective. Um, from the arts perspective, lots of auditions happen on campus. So my auditions for the Grand Park Chorus, for Chicago Symphony Orchestra Chorus um, were on campus. There are also um, auditions for the Met auditions are also at Northwestern's campus, which is fun. Um, and so also too, typically the Northwestern Purple Mafia, of just people who are connected in every single industry known to man is very real. So when I had my Chicago Symphony Orchestra chorus, the chorus master was actually a Northwestern alum. And so we were talking about like what dining halls that we had eaten in kind of similar to what Sydney had mentioned. Um, and also too, um, 
in particular, opportunities in Chicago from a career perspective are really showcased to musicians from a very early point, whether it's having gigs or things uh, in the greater Chicago community that's really accessible. Um, and so in applying for a more corporate job, the first place I turned when it was June of my, my fifth year and I had no job, job opportunities which was to Northwestern Career Advancement. And as well, we have an online platform called Handshake that Northwestern uses where you can see job postings. And so what's really great about um, those two is that they can see my transcript, they can see my majors and things like that. And it really helped me try to recurate what my career skills could look like, even though I was a creative writing and opera major. And I found this one job position um, actually through LinkedIn. And one thing I was doing was looking for any possible Northwestern alumni that were at any companies I applied to. It did not matter what year they graduated, what they majored in. I was like, hi, I recently graduated and I just applied to your company. Can I have like an informal conversation with you? And throughout the summer, I probably, I had at least 25 phone calls with Northwestern alum. And what really surprised me was one, how willing they were to just drop their plate to talk to a complete stranger solely because I had gone to the same school as them, but also how accommodating and really um, full of guidance they were in order to give me um, guidance. So I would talk about, hey, I've done some work in some nonprofits and they recommended me to the um, environmental sector. And with the actual position that I have right now, I had a phone call with a Northwestern alum. He graduated in 2013 as a, um, as a mechanical engineer. And he was the one that made sure that the HR department saw my resume and I'm now on the same staff as him. So whether it's working as a campus through the official structures that are existing for career advancement or it's just working with an alumni connection, that's definitely something you're gonna be supported with no matter what industry you're in. Awesome. I can, I can really second that. I decided to pivot from pre-med to consulting like kind of a week before it all started to happen. The interview started to happen. I had really no idea what I was doing transparently. And so I reached out to NCI, got the help of Daniel, who was around at the time too. Um, it's like a fun reunion tour for all of us who, who used to work together. Um, and Northwestern Career Advancement was super, super helpful. They taught me how to do a case interview, which was something I had no idea how to do. Um, ended up getting a job a lot, mainly through the help of Northwestern, both through recru recruiters coming on campus, people that I networked with from the Northwestern community, quite a number of things. And then this in January, once I found myself at a crossroads of trying to decide what to do, I had already graduated quite a while ago, um, but I reached out to the head of NCA who had also helped me with um, consulting recruitment. And we chatted a number of times, chatted through the offer, chatted through what I really wanted and felt like I could get out of both experiences. And then about a month later, my startup started really, really rapidly hiring. And so I reached back out to Mark and said, hey, do you have any early 2021 grads or 2020 grads who don't have jobs yet um, who you think would be a good fit for this role? And so we, we haven't hired anyone yet from Northwestern, but it's definitely been cool to be able to kind of pay it forward in a lot of ways as well to, you know, say, hey, I was so helped by the Northwestern alumni community and like our company's hiring and we'd love to hire someone from Northwestern, like get an intern, whatever it may be. Um, so that's definitely been really cool. Pivoting a little bit back to Northwestern life, Emily, can you talk a little bit about the balance of the social life between athletes, artists, and academics at Northwestern? Uh, yeah. So um, the first thing I, I say, and I, I often said this on my tours when uh, people asked about like work life balance or study life balance, um, is that for the most part, I did not find myself unless it was finals week, um, did not find myself in the library for an entire weekend. Um, that's like a really good, just like a starting point. Um, you might be in the library, like working on something Sunday night, but for the most part, I had most of like my weekends free, um, able to have some time to yourself and meet people and all that different stuff. Um, so there's definitely a balance there that just kind of like happens already. So long as you're not, um, really taking a ton of classes if you're just taking the normal amount of classes. Um, and then I also always like to point out that Northwestern has a, a pretty good culture about um, like making sure that you're not like <laughs> you're not overdoing it. Um, like we I, my friends and I always celebrated each other when we dropped a class that we 
just hated working on um, or that just took way too much of our time and that we didn't really need. Um, so that's like a great culture. Um, it, Northwestern actually has an extended drop period, which means that you can drop classes after six weeks instead of having to drop them early on. Um, so you definitely have time to figure out your uh, work-life balance. Um, and then another cool thing about Northwestern is that a lot of the social aspects like athletes, artists, all this kind of stuff are very integrated. Um, Northwestern community can really get behind the arts, which I think is really fun. Um, you'll often find every type of person going to a comedy show together, um, and that can be really fun. Um, Northwestern is sporadically really good at sports. Um, so whichever one's doing really well, people will kind of rally behind that. Um, so that can be really fun as well. There's just so many opportunities to get into something that you like and to go see something that you like. Um, and all of your friends are most likely doing a fair amount of different things. Um, so that's another really cool aspect too, is like, no matter what you're doing, your friend might be doing something completely different. Um, so during the week, you might go watch someone's club lacrosse game and you might go to a dance show and you might go to your first ever musical, different things like that um, are always happening on campus. And so there's always a ton of opportunities to just get to like support your friends and hang out with people. And again, you you will have the time to do that um, despite the academic rigor of Northwestern. Awesome. I think that leads really well into our next question, which is about the quarter system, how people manage. And I think Candace, you more than anyone managed a number of things being dual degree with the quarter system. So chat a little bit about how it helped you um, and how it enabled you to do what you wanted. Definitely. I think the, one of the biggest perks with the quarter system is that students are able to take more classes during the academic year. I'm a little bit rusty on the math of it, but I know that on a, a given year on the quarter system, we're able to take two additional classes a year, which that totals to over a traditional four-year academic experience, eight additional classes, and that can easily add up to a minor. Um, some people are very much so Anna's in their DNA and want to cram in an extra major or a minor, um, but based on the academic schedule that you want to have, you definitely have that flexibility. Um, but that's from a perspective of wanting to get lines on a piece of paper. I think how I experienced it was knowing that material and subjects and courses went by fast, which is both good and bad. Fast in that um, if there's a class that you don't really like, it's only gone and it's done in 10 weeks. You can get by, <laughs> get past it. Um, but also we do um, handle content very quickly. Um, one thing I was really worried about um, was that I had the assumption that maybe professors would try to cram a semester's worth of material in a quarter. That definitely has not been my, um, my case or my experience. And one particular example is that um, for most schools, if say they're on a semester-based system, they'll teach um, you know, integrals and derivatives in two separate semesters. Um, in the math sequence that I took, we actually did um, integrals and derivatives and we had like a separate just entire quarter working on the weird intricacies and applications between the two. Um, but um, as um, Emily was mentioning before and being able to have that drop deadline that really allows students to have the flexibility to take classes just for fun. So for me, even though I was a dual degree student and received two bachelor's degrees, I was able to learn a third language solely for fun. I took Marriage 101, one of our most popular courses here at Northwestern. Um, honestly took a lot of courses that I would not have had the flexibility or ability um, to talk about or to um, to take if I was just on a traditional um, semester experience. Awesome. Um, our next question is what types of interactions did you have with your professors and have you been able to maintain those relationships and Emily I think is eager to talk about this. Um, I just loved my thesis advisor, Professor Lila Shapiro. I think I talked about her a lot in the SBC, actually, so everyone might know that. Um, but I had um, some really great relationships with a few, like a, a few of my professors. Um, all of them were very nice, but some of them, you know, with a smaller class size, you get to know them a little bit better. Um, and then some of them you just like figure out, you learn what they're interested in over the course of the quarter, um, what they're researching and all that stuff. And you're just like, that is the coolest thing ever. Um, and that's kind of my experience with my thesis professor. Um, so we're still in touch. I have been toying with the idea of going to grad school lately. So I'm going to talk to her about it because she knows that I kind of hated research every once in a while. Um, no hate for research, though. I was just a little COVID tired. Um, but uh, so that's that's one of my professors I have a great relationship with. Um, another professor, her name's Dr. Sufrin. Um, I just ended up taking a bunch of her classes, just kind of like 
happenstance took one with Elizabeth. Um, it was one of like the better classes I took at Northwestern. Um, and so I was just, I loved the way she taught a class. And so I just ended up in a, in a bunch of them um, and have a great relationship with her still. We had a meeting the other day. Um, and then throughout, you'll just have, you'll have professors where you feel comfortable to go into office hours and you'll have professors where you would rather email them. Um, you'll have some where they'll send you your, their first name as the email signature. And that is like a little bit of a relationship in and of itself. Um, but there are definitely professors that you'll meet throughout your time and be able to like kind of stick with um, and those two professors that I mentioned actually always uh, send recommendations for for when I was applying to jobs as well. Um, so that can also be really helpful, especially if you're uh, taking classes from professors who are in the field that you're interested in working in later. Awesome. Thank you. So we have a, our next question specifically for Sydney. How is the diversity at Northwestern? And as a student, did you feel comfortable as a POC and maybe a little bit more about the alumni community as well? And if you've been able to continue to foster kind of some of those relationships in that culture as well? Yeah, for sure. I feel like anywhere you go, you're gonna be able to find your community. You know what I mean? So I think about how, <laughs> I'm laughing because when I first started at Northwestern, my first year, the majority of my friends were like, Asian, you know, and so not only just Asian, of course, like Chinese, Japanese. So I got to learn so much about Asian culture. And so that was super cool when I first got there. And then as I grew, my friend group just became so much more diverse. I even think about how hardcore I was friends with the people at the admissions office and how diverse we were as a team. Like, come on, six black girls in the office at the same time. Like we were really out there. So that was exciting. And then of course, when you see people who you think even identify the same as you, I would just go up to them and be like, um, can we be friends? And they were like, yes. So that's how I met the majority of my friends. You know, you see people that look like you are in the same class as you, has the same interests as you, just go up to them. Like, everybody's harmless. We're in the Midwest. Everybody will love you. <laughs> so yeah, that was my experience with diversity. And yeah, I feel like that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I was diversity. You know, I was diverse. So <laughs> anywhere I went was diversity. <laughs> don't give me no more questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, we're we're doing we're doing great on this panel. Um, if, if anyone else wants to piggyback off <laughs> off of that, feel free. Um, but I think Sydney, you know, said it quite well. Cool. I think we'll we'll pivot a little bit um, to some super specific questions we have. So, Daniel, can you talk a little bit about neuroscience professors, research opportunities, and cool classes you took? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm happy to talk about all of that. You might have to remind me about the question if I missed some components. But the neuroscience program at Northwestern is like super cool because it is so new. I think uh, the class of 2019, my year was maybe the third, between the third and sixth year of graduating classes. And in relation to a lot of other more established science departments like chemistry or physics or biology, that is like absolutely like a fetus department and is so young. But what that means for students is that professors are extremely willing to adapt to students' interests and their needs as they continue to develop curriculum for subsequent classes. And so one of the, like one of my favorite classes I ever took was a class called um, the mechanisms or like mechanisms of neuropsychopharmacology, right? So thinking about and understanding the ways that drugs interact with your brain. And in that class, we all got to take a different direction our own direction, um, a Northwestern direction, one might say, um, in choosing what exactly we wanted to study in that class. And so some folks, for example, uh, studied the effects of cannabis on the brain. Other people were looking at um, traditional pharmaceutical uh, agents and interactions. Um, I had an interest in uh, biological warfare, and so I chose to study how uh, different biological uh, or chemical agents that are meant to inflict pain and suffering on people can also be used to study uh, different drug interactions for the benefit of humanity and for the benefit of medicine. And so that was a really, really cool class that I think I got to take because of the quarter system, because we have these shorter quarters where we can sort of spend 10 weeks on something that's a little bit less traditional or a little bit less, um, uh, I guess what you'd find in a normal bio like biology or neuroscience curriculum. 
Um, some of my other favorite classes, though, that I got to take outside of neuroscience, of course, have to include uh, Marriage 101, which I, which I know Candice brought up earlier. It's a class where, you know, you take, um, you take, you, you're in that class with a couple of people or with a lot of people, and you're actually paired up with another student to be uh, your partner for that quarter, and you go through that quarter as a, as a married couple. Uh, my Marriage 101 wife actually is with me at some point now, and we catch up every once in a while. Uh, we just, we put it on a calendar, Marriage 101 uh, date night, um, and we, we just keep up. And so it's a really great way that I found uh, to meet people outside of my major because that class was filled with people. We studied all sorts of different things, as well as an opportunity to, um, as well as an opportunity to build relationships uh, with professors as well that you might not normally get to talk with or interact with very often. Awesome, thank you so much. So our next question I'm gonna take, um, what opportunities did we have with neuroscience that did not include med school? Um, obviously a lot, a lot. You can you can do whatever you're, you're feeling like at the moment when you study neuroscience. Um, <laughs> which also kind of leads into a question of why did so many alumni neuroscience majors decide to pursue other paths? I think Daniel and I are just two people out of what is the second largest major in the College of Arts and Sciences. So definitely we are a very small and not representative sample. I have a ton of friends who are neuroscience majors with me who are fully on the path to med school and are crushing it with their applications. A lot of them work in research right now, which is really fun for them. Um, but I think for me, the main decision, and someone also specifically asked what drove my decision to leave pre-med. Um, for me, I think what I really realized is that I was really passionate about helping people and wanting to make an impact. And that was something that I had done a lot of work with in Kesem and something that I kind of had always envisioned like being a doctor is like the way to do that. And I think I realized there are a lot of ways to make an impact in the world um, and in doing whatever you want and working in marketing at a startup may not be, but you know, I work with a lot of restaurants and we really tangibly make a difference in the lives of their, you know, their income with COVID and everything. And it's been really cool to see this very different kind of side of things that I never thought about. I also just realized like med school is not ever fully off the table. And that if that was something that I've wanted to pursue later on, like it's always going to be there. And so I decided to take a little bit of time and figure out what I was really interested in before committing the rest of my life to medicine. And I think that that's okay if we think about like a 50 year career in medicine and then like a couple of years of figuring out what I wanna do before making that commitment, that's a pretty small trade off. Um, so yeah, I think that's a little bit about my decision. Um, the other, the next question that we have is for Emily. It's just talking a little bit about what makes CESB special and your experience in CESB. Um, so I think the biggest thing that makes SB special is just like its size. Um, there are about like a hundred students in the graduating class, I want to say. Um, so it can be a pretty small school, which is really, really cool because it means that all of your classes are uh, fairly small. You pretty much know a lot of the people in your major, um, which I think can be kind of fun. Um, personally. Uh, but another cool thing about SESPI is that we also do a ton of like group work um, to a, a, a large extent, a lot of group work. So if you're, you're not in SESPI and you take a SESPI class, sometimes it can be a little bit off-putting. Um, but a lot of times, a lot of the classes will be like centered around doing a group project for the whole quarter, um, which kind of sounds like it's not that fun, but it actually is because it means that you're in a group of like five to eight people um, who you might not know, but you're just in a class together and you have a shared interest um, and you get to like really deep dive into subjects, um, which I think can be a really great experience. Uh, in one of my classes called Social Policy Making and Implementation, we basically went through the process of how you make policy, uh, how you write policy, what basis you have to go off of, the research you have to do. And at the end of the class, we created um, a presentation and wrote a policy brief um, and presented it to the class as if the class were some um, 
organization of people. Um, so for my project, we looked at the sh Chicago Public Schools. Um, we looked at school closings and kind of the best way to uh, make sure that we don't have to have any school closings in the future. Um, so we did a ton of research, came up with the idea of doing uh, principal leadership programs and mentorship programs. Um, and it took the whole quarter, but we presented it at the end. And it was a really, really cool experience to actually get to like work through what policy actually is um, and see kind of what we were studying actually be used, like be put into motion um, and how you might actually do that in the world. So that was a really cool experience. One of my favorite CESB classes. Um, but yeah, I think in general, CESB, the best part about it is that it's a small school. There are four to five counselors. Um, your counselor knows your name. Uh, my counselor's name is Ken, was is Ken, and he's a great guy. Ken Powers, uh, very sweet. Always said hi to me when we were walking past each other on campus. Um, so that was kind of one of the cooler parts of SESB for sure. Awesome. So our final question of the evening is going to be our classic why Northwestern, but why we're grateful that we chose Northwestern. But based on some of the questions that y'all have sent in, I have a special twist for everyone on that question. So. Candice, you are up first. So in addition to why you're grateful for Northwestern, what is one unique thing that Northwestern gave you and will help you to carve a successful path into the real world when you're already well on your way to carving? Okay, it's always funny when I answer this question first because I feel like I have to describe my how I got into Northwestern experience. So I applied as a posse scholar. So I was very, very early decision. I got in in about early December. Um, and definitely being a part of that scholarship program was a big reason as to why I decided to come to Northwestern without ever having visited the university or been in the state of Illinois. <laughs> um, but I think why I was initially attracted to it was that I knew that it was one of the few institutions that I could study both creative writing and study opera and have those both represented on the degrees that I would get. Um, and that was something that I knew from the get-go, get but now having graduated and obtained a job <laughs> outside of my areas of specialization, I think one thing I really learned at Northwestern had, how to do was how to spin. It's something that we say in the admissions office a lot of no matter what situation you're in, you're in being able to spin something to the positive. And while that is something that I didn't quite know how to do <laughs> before coming to college and now I'm in, just in trying to figure out making the best of being in an international pandemic or trying to figure out what post-grad life is like. Um, it's been really great to have this sort of mindset of being able to figure out what the positive is, what I need in the situation. Um, and also to just being able to have and make friends. I know a lot of people say that people are what makes Northwestern Northwestern, but um, even outside of my scholarship group was what those cohort of people is what made me feel comfortable from the moment I stepped foot on Northwestern's campus. What made me feel comfortable and confident stepping off of Northwestern's campus was all of the people that I met from the people in and outside of the classroom to the professors to um, the future alumni that I would meet later on. Awesome. Thank you for that. Daniel, it is your turn. So your special question is, what is the most valuable thing you learned during your education at Northwestern? And then also why you're grateful you chose Northwestern. Oh my gosh, the most valuable thing I learned is definitely not a specific piece of knowledge because as much as uh, I wish I could say, I remember everything from neuroscience and everything from philosophy, I absolutely don't. But the thing that I do take with me from Northwestern is like an education and how to think, right? Like I think one of the big, parts of my education and philosophy was how to construct an argument logically and concisely. And that is also my training as a scientist too. When I'm writing papers, I'm writing to be as cogent, as argumentative and as evidence-based as I can within a very, very small amount of words. And so um, those are the skills that I take with me to work, uh, whether that be as a teacher in Malaysia or as a consultant in Chicago, um, these ideas of how to think anal analytically to break down a problem into its constituent parts and then to reframe, reorganize and build a solution out of that. Um, the part of Northwestern that I'm really grateful for uh, definitely has to be the people because I, I learned so much from my peers. Um, but more importantly, I feel like I was able to find community in every student organization, every 
job that I was part of. Uh, the admissions family that you've met today is definitely one of my favorite communities on campus, but it's also with the different student groups I was a part of um, and the different uh, extracurricular opportunities with research as well. It's, it's always been so nice to have a close knit community. Maybe it's a Midwestern thing. Maybe we just are, are really nice to each other, um, but I've, I've really enjoyed um, yeah, the benefit of, of liking the people that I work with, that I study with, that I do research with. And uh, that's, you know, I think regardless of the college that you go to, there's a lot of similar colleges to Northwestern, but I think the people definitely make a huge difference. Totally, thank you for that. Emily, why are you grateful you chose Northwestern and what was one thing you wish you did more at Northwestern? Um, so I'll start with the one thing I wish I did more. Um, I think that this is maybe a little bit specific to 2020 grads, probably 2021 grads. Um, but I was just kind of waiting till the end to have my big nostalgia moment, I guess. Um, it got caught a little bit short, which was unfortunate. Um, and I think more than anything in those last uh, months of that of spring quarter in 2020, um, right before graduation, I wasn't thinking about like the classes that I thought I want that I wished I took because people said they were cool, um, even though there were a lot that I wish I took and I wasn't thinking about not getting to be a peer advisor, uh, even though that was something that was really important to me at the time. Um, but I was thinking more about how I wish I had just like taken the time throughout my college experience to assess and be grateful for all of the things that I had done even just that week. Um, and even if just during that week I was finishing a bunch of homework and wrote a paper I was proud of and had like a few rehearsals. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to like take stock of what you're grateful for at Northwestern uh, throughout your time there in case there is a global pandemic at the end of your time there. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I was uh, why I'm grateful to have been there is for all of those little things, um, for being able to get an amazing education and to not have to know exactly what I was doing the whole entire time. Um, I came in undecided to Northwestern and it was the best place to come in undecided to because I got to take just a ton of classes, meet a bunch of people that were doing so many different things. And even at the end when I was in my, I had confirmed everything, knew my major, knew what I was graduating with, um, I was still like had so many opportunities to do a bunch of different stuff. Um, and we can see that with like all the people here as well, who it doesn't really <laughs> study something in college, but then are just like doing something awesome, um, not necessarily related to that. So I think uh, Northwestern is just a really great place to learn how to learn, um, to learn to love what you're doing and to become passionate about, um, become passionate about what you get to do every day, so. Live, laugh, love. That's what Elizabeth just chatted me. So that's what you get to do at Northwestern. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I do a bright red like to me. <laughs> um, Sydney, what do you miss most about your time at Northwestern? And what are you grateful for? Um, so I feel like what I miss most are... <laughs> the shenanigans of my friends if I'm being honest because some of these are just not appropriate when you're a grown-up like my friends would just call me and be like hey we're going to 7-Eleven and I'm like it's 3 a.m and they're like okay and I was like you're right let me go get some pants okay <laughs> or like when I I had a onesies for the one time party for my birthday where everybody showed up in full-blown onesies including my friend who was six six eight so like these things you just don't do when you're an adult. And yes, I did have an existential crisis about turning 24 because of these things. I miss having close access to my friends. I miss being able to just do things spontaneously, you know, not having all day calls. <laughs> Let me not get it. Now we're about to get into some deep trauma. But yes, I just miss all of my friends. I just miss all of you guys so much. It's so great hanging out with you guys all again. And then your second question was, I, I, I lost it, Elizabeth. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> what are you what are you grateful for oh okay so I feel like I'm grateful for Northwestern because of the experiences I got you know not only my friends but I really realized how much Northwestern was for me you know it's like Northwestern is like a grocery store you know you go into Whole Foods you know what you're gonna get you know the vibes you know you're going there not for your Frosted Flakes but you're going there to get your fig spread with the orange peel in it to go with your brie cheese you know 
but Northwestern was like walking into Trader Joe's. I was like, this is my vibe. These are my people. This is the place I need to be every week. <laughs> so that's what I love the most about Northwestern. It was just literally a great fit. It just worked out so well for real, for real. Wow. That was, Thanks I feel deeply, me, Elizabeth, you knew what you I feel, doing. I feel deeply moved by that. <laughs> Um, I really do feel on a spiritual level that Northwestern is Trader Joe's and to anyone in the in the crowd wondering we are actually pretty close to a Trader Joe's so the good news is you can get the best of Trader Joe's at Northwestern because it is Northwestern um cool closing us out I'm also going to answer the question I'm not going to have subjected the four of them to this while not doing it myself so my question is what makes Northwestern feel like home to me so I, honestly, I know this sounds really cheesy and feels like hard to believe in the audience of this panel, but this, like this YouTube Zoom is super fun for us. Um, I really, wow, I just said YouTube Zoom. That's like not a thing. Um, but this, this Zoom is super fun. We all work together for a really long time. And so it's really fun to kind of come back together. And I think like Daniel chatted about a little bit just before, um, it's totally the people at Northwestern. I think that Northwestern was a place that I felt really supported me through both like highs and lows. So having a small existential crisis and I was like, mm, maybe not going to go to med school. And, you know, all of these people were like there for that while I was really trying to figure out my life. And we're all super supportive of my friends, you know, coworkers, faculty, staff at Northwestern, um, the directors in the admissions office. It was all a really great place. I felt to learn and grow and, you know, try to figure out who I was and also just like what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I still don't know. And I think that Northwestern has helped me to realize that that's okay. I'm enjoying what I do right now. Do I want to work in marketing forever? I don't really know, but <laughs> I'm enjoying it. And, you know, I'm just kind of going to figure out the next steps as I go and know that I really love Northwestern and Northwestern gave me really great problem solving skills and ways to just kind of figure out what I want to do and what I want to be and enjoy, you know, hanging out so yeah that is that's kind of my answer so with that thank you all for tuning in to this very very fun reunion tour with a lot of jokes you didn't ask for or didn't understand um enjoy hopefully your time at Northwestern if you decide to come to prospective students I can't encourage you enough to apply so with that thank you all so much have a wonderful night and as always go cats Thank <laughs> you.